Thinking you have no control. It's always going to be this way. I always feel overwhelmed. It's always there. I have no control. There's nothing I can do. I'm powerless. I'm absolutely powerless to change this. Why? Here's what you do. Analyze the reason for your fear. Change your thought life. Every time you get a negative thought, try to... I don't just mean... What it is is when you have this little negative thought coming around, just think, look, here's that little negative thought. And here's all these positive thoughts. And then just take it. But here's how we do. We got a little more positive thought and all the negative. No. All right? So now... Here's your memory. Here, here's your, analyze the reason for your fear. Change your thought life. Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy, think on these things. And memorize this. Again, Isaiah 41 to 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up in my righteous right hand. Now here's what I want you to do. If you take a note, turn this paper over and write this on the back. I want you to do this. I'm going to tell you how you can decrease... And I may just start out next week with this here anyway. But how you can decrease uh, your, your phobic fear. Phobic fear. One of the things I have found out, I heard about, was the way to get, to, the way to get people, period. Not just soldiers overseas, but people here that have got PTSD. There is something called repetitive, the repetitive therapy. Repetitive therapy. And repetitive therapy is the things I don't want to think about because it causes pain, getting them to keep rehearsing over and over and over. And what happens is, and here's what I do to myself, when there's something I cannot stand, something's hurting me, I repeat it over and over and over again. Why? Because it will desensitize me eventually. I'll get desensitized to it so it, don't, so it takes away the shock value. It doesn't take away the knowledge of the situation, but it takes away the shock value. Right? And that's the problem with PTSD. You don't want to talk about it. And so every time you see it or hear something, it reminds you the shock value is there. And it just tears you up. So here's what you do. Uh, if you're ever sensitive to, to, to an object or situation, here's the key. The door to freedom. Systematically repeat each of the following steps one at a time. Matter of fact, I ain't going to make this. I'm going to put this down. I'm, a, I'm going to uh, uh, use next week part four okay and repetitive therapy and for y'all that were here the other people that weren't here we will be repetitive then but y'all get some repetitive therapy because you're going to hear it all over again all right so look, here we go uh repeat the same step day after day for a week or two until you no longer have that strong emotional reaction shock value has diminished. Okay? It hurt me to think about walking in that bed, walking in the living room and seeing my, seeing my mom's lifeless body there. And she died before I could get to her. And I'd been with her all night, but I'd left her. And the last thing I told her was, it's okay, Mama, you can go. And so she did. But I did not make it in time. Although... I believe me and her a conversation. She ain't talking in days, and we talked that night. She was waiting for me to tell her it was okay. Because she died soon after. But when I walked in, seeing her there, her lifeless body there was terrible. And one side of went run. Just run. Just go outside and run. And that's what some of my family members did. And that's fine. I'm not, I'm not talking about anything they did. Nothing. Because everybody handles it differently. But I came back in, and I kept walking up to her. While I was waiting for them, they, she, they left her there until my brother got from Raleigh. And so, so I just, I kept going up and I, and, I, and, I, and I held her hand. I knew she was dead, but I held her hand. And, and I kissed her forehead. And I, just, and I, know, I know she couldn't hear me. Not there, but I said, Mama, I love you. And I just kept on. Why did I keep on? Because I knew it was repetitive therapy. Because I didn't want to be there. Did not want to be there. And then they said, when they come to pick her up, y'all go in another room. And my sister said, no, I'm staying right here. I'm going to take her out. So I stayed there with my sister until they took her out. And then we went and put her in the ground. My sister said, I'm not going to leave. I put her in the ground. My sister said, no, I'm staying right here. So I stayed with my sister while I 
box why, why, why they put it in the ground. And again, I just kept, kept getting in there because I knew that if I didn't, the shock value would cause some bad things. You see people where the shock value is high and they can't even handle it. They go emotionally, emotionally they just lose it. You know, they can't put their faith in, their, in practice because fears are mobilizing them. So, uh, for one the half day for a week or two until you no longer have that strong emotional reaction or that shock value has been 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 uh, 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 downsized. And then move on to the next step, and that is anxiety should be expected when moving to the next step, but dissipate when this step is done with increased repetition. And that is just do it again. Increase. Increase. And if you've got something in your life right now that you cannot stand to think about, if you've got something in your life right now that's really tearing you up, and every time you think about it, it really gets the best of you, I challenge you, on purpose, on purpose, don't just think about it, muse on it, M-U-S-E, muse on it. You know what an amusement park, you know, again, A, amusement park. Muse means to think, to concentrate, to really put all your, 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 your thinking juices in there. A muse means not to think. You go to the amusement park, you don't think, you just hold on. But you go to a museum, you think. It's all the stuff you think. So whatever it is that's really driving you crazy, I challenge you, instead of pushing it down, pull it up. And with God's help, ask God to help you. Don't do it on your own. Ask God to help you. But you take these scriptures, use these scriptures, and you think about that. Don't sit back and try to blame yourself, blame somebody. Don't, I'm not playing the blame game. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about releasing it. You've got to release it. Then does it still hurt from the mother's death? Yes, it hurts. Every time I think about it, it hurts. I can ride up to the house and think about how little my brother and my daddy walked out of the door and said she's gone. And I'll ride in. I think about that just about every time I go to that back door, I think about it. What I do is, instead of thinking about going in and thinking about going to see a dead person, I think about going in and see mom and calling, cricket! <laughs> and so, just, just, just change your thought pattern. It will help you. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, how in the world can you be in a research situation that we're all going through in my family? We're all going through the situation. The person asked me, said, how can you always be so up and cheerful and expecting great things when I don't see it? And I said, because I do see it. Have I got it in my hand? No. Do I feel it? No. Do I expect it? Yes. You're expecting bad. I'm expecting good. You walk around looking like a Missouri mule eating in briars. And I'm grinning. And you're mad because I'm grinning. I just get mad. Because I refuse to chew briars. They don't feel good. What, what I feel that you're teaching us how to do is to let our, our faith grow and emerge. Yes. This is good stuff. This is, this is how to overcome. This isn't just, this, this is. It's not something we can do by ourselves. No, you've got to have God's help. You cannot do this on your own. But if you don't, if you don't start somewhere, you will find yourself trapped in the memories of the past, hurtful memories, and and uh, it's not good, not good at all. There was a time I was dealing with some. I love. Go ahead and shout, bro. Y'all hear him shout? Oh yeah. That that was the baby version of glory. He said, "Preach it, preach it, Uncle Pastor." So. I mean, I, I remember, I mean, dealing with people many times that are going through, going through grieving cycles, and I'm going to try to talk to them, and they say, I can't talk, I just don't want to talk about it. And I said, hold on, let's talk about it a different way. All you can think about is the pain. Let's talk about some things that were great about that person. Whenever I get with the family, if you've ever, if I've ever preached a funeral, and you were involved, you know, I get together with the families and give me some words, and they give me some good stories. And what it does is it gets the people's focus off of the pain and gets it on 
some some good stuff, and it helps. So again, you can't you cannot avoid pain, and you cannot stop problems. What you can do is how you look at it. You can stop how you look at it. You can change the way you look at it, and and if you do, you'll see a big big difference in how you handle things. Anybody else got any? We use an acronym called STOP, S-T-O-P, and the S stands for STOP. You stand that right where you're at, sit down on whatever. T is think. Think about the situation. How did I get into it? What happened to get me to this point? Observe all the things around you that you can use to get out of that situation and then plan your actions to get you through it. Awesome. Stop. That's awesome. That's awesome. Just remind me. That's not what you gave me the other day. Right. Well, give it to me Sunday, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll put that in here. Um, that's awesome. Very bright youngin. A few, just a few years ago, when she, I ain't gonna call her names, but her initials was Marina. Marina. <laughs> um, Marina. This is Marina Bonner. Yeah. Used to be Marina Bonner. And that's Marina, but she got slew. She stepped up in the world. She's Marina Golden now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but a uh, couple of acronyms that I heard out of her mouth. I don't know where she got them from, and she says she don't remember them. Last time I mentioned it. But for fear, false evidence appearing real. real. For faith, fantastic adventures in trusting Him. And also forsaking, forsaking, uh, what is it, forsaking, uh, faith, forsaking all I trust Him. I like that better. <laughs> There's a bunch of all kinds of acronyms and acrostics that yeah. we can come through, and it's really some yeah. awesome stuff. But and, and this thing you've got there, that was an acrostic. It was not an acronym. Right. Well, that's what I thought, but you told me it's an acronym, so I got it. Well, acronym is each letter stands for I listen to Larry. Word, Cur Curly, Curly but... don't listen to Larry much in Moda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> By the way, Curly doesn't uh, hear it. Yeah, when I first looked at it, it looked like each letter stood for a word, but it don't. It's the beginning of a phrase. Right. So that's an acrostic. Okay. Well, I just let you go with it, because I you had me some mixed it don't up. Matter. I, I was so bummed found it up. It doesn't matter. It don't matter. It still was working. It worked. Yeah, okay. It worked. One way to get over your fears is expand your comfort zone. Always. Because one thing in the class I do, some instructors don't make them spend the night in the shelter that they do. In my class, you're going to spend the night in that shelter out in the woods. That's cool. Regardless of temperature, regardless of where you had anything else. Because <laughs> sooner or later, you're going to have to do it for real. That's right. And it's going to be, oh no, how do we do this? Or, i got to do this again. <laughs> but a lot of, a lot of, yeah, but what I've discovered is, it's like, it's like in the ministry. When, when you're going into ministry, they honestly... They teach you Bible, but they don't teach you leadership, and they don't teach you how to handle things like this. And so, over the years, that's what I've done with a lot of young ministers: is teach them how to overcome fear of getting in front of people, and how to overcome. That's why all the stuff, all the stuff we do with all those guys, you know, get, they're not afraid to get in front of anybody anymore. You know, get up and going over to the pit detention center. I mean, there's nobody. None of the guys going with us is. They're all just as solid as a rock. And when we first went in there, they weren't. I wore them. You wore them. No. We were all in there like, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, you know, once you get going. And it's still, and we've been doing it now for how many years? I still walk in sometimes in the F block, and my, and my heart goes, <gasps> <laughs> and, I, and especially those big guys look like, what are you doing here? Yeah. Now, what was funny was Halloween. I went there with an orange shirt on. They said, what you doing? You're a great punk? And I said, no. I said, I want to dress up like a guard, but that's illegal, so I dress up like a... I dress up like a detention, like a, a detention, a detention E. <laughs> yeah, they didn't like that. <laughs> All 